In this tutorial in CyberLink PowerDirector, we're going to share some tips about how to manage all the elements you have in your project, especially as your project becomes more complex. Sometimes it's difficult to know what do I have, where is it, how can I find it. We're going to give you some tips on managing all the components in your project. One of the best things I can offer is to rename some of the items that you have in your media room. All of mine come in, as yours do, with the name that they were given as they're located in your file system. Now I have a lot of stock video in this example here. And it starts out with a number and then it has a part of a title on the end. It's not all that helpful. But if I right click on it, I'll get a pop-up screen. One option is to change the alias. I'll click on that and now I can give it any name I want. I'll just call this books because it's a video of books and glasses. And now it's changed. Now it has not changed the original file name uh, wherever that's stored, but it has changed it in the program. But notice one thing, when you change something here that you've already brought to the timeline, and I have over here the same clip, it will not change the name once it's put on the timeline. Now if I drag it down to the timeline after I've changed it, it will retain the alias. Otherwise it will not. I'll control Z out of that. Now likewise, if I go back, I can right click and I can do reset alias and it will give it the original file name. Now, if I have something in the timeline, I can right click on it and I can also do the option that says uh, edit clip alias and one option is change it. And here's the source name and I can change this to books and click on OK. But notice again, these are independent of each other. This will not change the source name in the media room but oftentimes it's helpful simply to rename some of the elements depending on where you're using them in the project and what role they have. In fact, you may rename something differently in one project as opposed to another, but that's what the aliases are for, and you can use them on any kind of files. I find that very helpful in terms of keeping track of what I have. Aliases are very useful. Let me give you another tip. Another tip is oftentimes we have multiple tracks. I'll give myself some more room here. We can see all that we have here. And oftentimes we forget that we can actually label the tracks horizontally. So I'm going to move on this little marker on the left side and drag it to the right. And here I have track names. Now the nice thing about this is I can change the names of tracks. For example, I can take my mouse on my primary track, number one, that's called Video Track, and drag the cursor across the label, and then I can simply call it my A roll, my primary track, and then I can go to track two, and I can call this my B roll. And so that would give me a very easy way to distinguish between the two. Now I have two separate tracks here that have titles on them. Uh, I could call this, these are titles that I put in my lower left, so I could call it L left titles. And down here on the title track, I have others, and I'll call it lower right titles. So if you have titles that will vary or be in the same spot or be for a similar purpose, uh, it doesn't have to be about location, you can label the tracks accordingly. Now I have a voice track and a music track. And I think the music track I'm going to simply rename as my uh, themes, music themes. And the voice track I'm going to call my voiceovers. Now remember in PowerDirector you have up to 99 tracks. So you can have as many tracks with as many names as you find useful in your project. But Naming your content files for the project's sake and naming your tracks is also helpful to keep you organized when it gets a bit confusing as it becomes more complex. Let me give you a third idea. A third idea is don't forget that it's very easy to turn on and off what you see in your media room. 
all of these three icons, when they're blue and luminous, will show you that they're active. If I turn it off, I just made all my music disappear. And if I turn on this one, all the pictures go away, but there are none. If I turn this one off, then that takes all my videos out. The other thing I'd like encourage you to do is you can click on this library menu box at the top. And one option is details. Now I wish we could change the width of the columns here, but we can't. But if you have a lot on the screen, this is a very easy way to see a lot more in your media room. And remember, you can also change the way in which you sort this stuff. You can sort it by name, duration, file size, date, or type. And so right now it's sorted by name. If I want to sort it by type, now it's sorted by the type. My MP3s are together and the other ones as well. My WAV files are at the bottom. So you can sort this this way. But sometimes uh, this is a more effective way of seeing more at the same period of time. And if you want to go back, just go back to your icons, small, medium, or large. And you can, you can also drag and drop from the detail menu. It really doesn't matter. But these are helpful tools that I have found useful in more complicated projects in trying to organize and manage the information on the screen so I don't get lost in the things I've done already.